let, let's, let's get on to that one film that, that we have talked about quite a bit, your memories working on 2001. Yes, I'd like to hear it now. When Ryder was the sound supervisor, and he asked me on and said to go and see Stanley Kubrick and, and, and talk through the breathing in space and how he wanted it done. So, um, you know, I had to go and have an appointment. David DeWard, who's a member of the Guild, David DeWard was the first assistant on the picture, and I had to make an appointment with him to go and see Stanley. So, and when I went in there, we were in the winter, winter time, he was stuck in there in his blue suit with a, uh, an inhaler up each nostril, so he didn't catch a cold from anybody. And he just said, I want you to pretend that uh, you are in the spacecraft and going out into space, and I want you to wear the helmet when you shoot the effects. Okay, so we got the, the genuine helmet, went into the sound mixing room, and stuck the hat on. And the, the first thing that happened that every single movement of a <laughs> dang click and little, if you had a rasp in your throat, <laughs> because the microphone was inside. So we tried to work that out and got it nearer. So, and then we decided, or I decided because I had to edit all this, that I would have two 35 mil tracks running in a transfer bay of the same record on two 35 tracks so that I could then cut, uh, run them together, cut them, and then if I needed to take out a noise, I could take, take the, the background, the, the sort of white noise, which it was, and, and then cut, I had to cut it diagonally because every click, it was so low, some of it would, would so it's cut at an angle, purely to uh, get rid of the clicks because, uh, Stanley insisted on having everything off original, no transfers. So anyhow, I would do this and it took me, it took me a day to record it all and then two weeks to edit it, cut it down and then go back to see Stanley. We'd sit in the theatre, he'd run it with the all cut, beautifully done. And he'd sit at the front of the theatre with a notebook and a, and a pad and was talking into a, a very thing we'd never seen then, which was a little sort of machine that you talked into and record, a little recorder. It was, don't forget, we're in 1966. And then he'd come back and he'd run it back and say, could you do it again? And so, But he didn't tell me what he wanted. He'd just say, do it again. So and we go, okay, fine, of course, you know. You're on the payroll, that's what you're told to do. So you go back into the theatre again, the mixer's there again, all the crew's there again. Double things, do it all again. And I did it three times until I think he was either trying to find out, it was so difficult, how do you do different breathing? Do you put more exertion into it? I mean, I don't know what it was supposed to be like. I just, just me breathing, just pretending. And I had to be careful how my movements, if I was climbing out of the thing or hanging on to something. Anyhow, dream. so that ended up in a picture. Although in the book that David Ward wrote, he said Stanley did it, which he didn't. I did. <laughs> <laughs> so that was another tiny thing. Stanley Kubrick was a nutcase. He may be very clever, but we thought 2001 was so boring, so slow. But that was, I don't know. I got involved in the music there too. With, with We had to get the original music back from Germany. And so I had to go over and pick it up because they had to have security for it because it was the masters. That's just a little story. Came back with the masters. 2001, I think, is a, a, a linchpin to an awful lot of people of my generation, uh, just in terms of just extraordinary cinematic art. And um, the fact that your breathing is so upfront in that film. Only know, in it, style, yes, a little bit. 